Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy. I'm gonna rearrange my light here right quick. There we go. Hopefully that works. Um I sketched out this flamingo because I thought he was super cool looking. He has a super bright yellow eye. And then he's all these beautiful soft pink colors. He kind of looks a little, I don't know, insane, honestly. <laughs> but um, <coughs> I thought he was really cool looking, so I went ahead and sketched him out. Well, sketch. I, I took about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes to get the beak in just right and, and really get him in there. Well, um, with my sumo grip, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a, yeah, Sakura 0 0.05 um, mechanical pencil. Wow, that took a long time to get out. I also have my, sh this is my Shiminki palette. I got this set of Hordem Aquarelle Super Granulation The Galaxy set. And it comes with these colors. And so far, my very favorite is the black. It's got a purple black kind of back, um, which you'll see. <coughs> I also like the rose and the brown. The only one I really don't care for is the blue. It's not that it's not um, granulating, it is, but it's not as um, duo colored as the other ones are. At any rate, we're going to go ahead first and foremost. I want to use the black to get in the, like a nice kind of sooty feeling background. I want it to feel all um, soft and um, granular, for lack of a better word. This is my multimedia pad, my Artist Loft multimedia pad. The paper in it's pretty nice and it can take a wash pretty well. So we're just going to go for it. Um, around his head like so. I don't want to get any on him because he's like this beautiful soft pink color which I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get yet but we're going to start with the background and get it blocked in. Okay, put that brush down and I'm going to get I'm going to use this one. This is my Zen Art Cat Tongue Faux Squirrel Brush, which is super fun. And I want to I want to get some of this rose color worked up. Like so. I want to drop it in here. And that's Then I really want to work up this nice consistency of this black color because it is so pretty. Oops. I want it to mix right in there with that rose down here. Oops. That granulation is so pretty. Yeah, all right, we're gonna leave that alone now. Cause I could fuss with that for way too long. Right? Right. All right. Let's sit that down. And then I uh, almost didn't do it. Okay. 
good. And then I'm thinking about going in with just all the darks first, clearly, except for that spot there. I'm liking those textures on his beak. It looks awesome. Okay. Let's leave that alone. And then... A little splotch right there. Don't want to mess with that. Kind of do. It's very noticeable. Because that's not noticeable at all. We might have to come in with... A little more color later. That's fine for now. Alright. <coughs> oh, I might put a, put a pastel on the back of that. We'll see. Okay. Now him. What am I thinking? You know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that way. M. Graham Quinacridone Rose. Super light. Like, so light. You can hardly tell it's there. Yeah, like that. Hi guys, welcome to the voiceover portion of the video. In a little bit, I'm going to speed the video up. But right now, I am putting in Quinacridone Rose. M. Grams. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite pinks. I just wanted a light um, base color so that I could build on it with um, other mediums. I'm trying to remember to go in the direction of the feathers And just drop it and I decided to not worry about the edges because I need to put bunches of shadows on it anyways so I'm not too concerned about the edges of the, the bird and the background merging a little bit I really love to watch the colors spread out so I'm just dotting a little bit in here and heat there where the there's gonna be dark shadows And then kind of softening it out a little bit, pulling it down below that jawline. I love Quinn Rose. It is such a great color. And as I was looking at the Flamingo um, reference photos that I had up, I, I realized that they aren't really all pink. Sometimes they look a little peach, and sometimes they look a little um, more... Uh, yeah, peach is, is a good good way to put it. More of a combination of peach and, uh, and pink. Some of them are even closer to white, too. This guy, I saw a lot of peach in, though. Just gently, gently getting in some darks around the eye. I'm really digging this pink and then deciding maybe a little darker. <laughs> and then kind of swooshy f f marks for the direction of the feathers. A little dark at the top and then kind of yeah, soften it out a little bit. I didn't want to completely cover the background, but I do want to get in some... Like, I don't want to completely cover the white, but as you can see... 
I leave a lot of it shining through. There's lots of light pink areas. Um, basically did a little wash over the rest of them after I got done fussing with the shadow area in the head and around the eye and the top of the head. Now I'm going in with um, dioxazine purple. It's M. Graham's dioxazine purple. It is a great purple to get in some of those shadowy colors. I don't very often use black. Even on the beak, I didn't use black. I used um, neutral tint mixed with indigo. It makes a really nice kind of deep black color. I'm just making swooshy marks for those feathers. And I went, I did another coating of the Quinn Rose. As you can tell, it got just a little darker. Uh, I stopped jump cutting here pretty quickly and just speed the video up because it's easier to explain what I'm doing when I'm not jump cutting. But this is all watercolor wash underneath the... Um, oh, and then here I go with that orange. It's Chinese orange. It's Sennelier's Chinese orange. It's a really good orange. And I just drop that in there. I think that's the Chinese orange. Hold on. Let me get my... Nope, I lied. It's M. Graham's as a orange. The Chinese orange is right next to it. To the left. <clears throat> I really like that bright orange eye. The main reference photo I used. Um, the flamingo has this intense, slightly crazed, angry looking orange eye. <laughs> which drew my attention right away. Uh, I have other reference photos up um, for like feather textures and different colors that I might want to incorporate, but mostly, yeah, mostly just kind uh, of, here, here I go, here I go, getting out my, me tapping on it, thinking, thinking, do I really want to do this? Got out my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s, that's right. Could not not use them on this. I can actually tell you which colors I'm using as we go to. This one is pink, as you can see. Pop this up, I'll tell you the exact colors as we go. So exciting! Okay, this is the, the pink one. I used a lot of it. It doesn't have a point anymore. I'm gonna finally have to sharpen them. Pop the colors I used. I used pink. And I used. So that I could see better to do the voiceover. <laughs> but I take this pink and I do little scribbly circles all over the flamingo to get, um... There we go, now I can see this color. Wow. Um, just to get a little more texture and a slightly deeper pink color all over the bird without without really obliterating all the watercolor textures. I let a lot of that peep through too. And I, I go pretty quickly with the pink layer. I know it looks silly fast right now because I, I, this is two and a half times faster at this point. But um, yeah, I just block it in all over the bird. Because I realized if I'm gonna use the, ne the Neo Color 2s over the top of the watercolor, I'm gonna layer several different colors and there's going to be hopefully lots of texture so I went ahead with um, just a, a, a really quick lay down really really light on the beak though because the beak is it's not white there's lots of pink casts to it and a little bit of peach glow and then there's shadows um, and I tried to remember to, to use strokes in the body of the bird that are bigger because the feathers are bigger and more fluffy and soft and glowy looking and yeah I think I did a good job he's starting to come along okay oh yeah I go in here with I think it's this one that I used yeah nope that's not the one
Oh yeah, orangish yellow is the name of the color. <laughs> and it is, it is a, a slightly orange yellow color. Uh, very, I, I thought, well, I'll just put it down here. Then if I don't like it, I can always change it out. And I decided to take my paintbrush, really, it's not wet at all. It's just dipped in the water and then uh, pat dried on my um, towel. And I'm gently, so gently, scraping the brush over the top of all the co the pink color, just really light. And trying to remember to go in the direction of the feathers. So I get that swooshy effect. Um, and I really wanted that pink to be a little more... Um, to take away the texture of the crayon a little bit. A little bit of that orange yellow around the eye because I wanted it to glow a bit and in that um, I don't want to use white to make the highlights I'm, I'm hoping that the yellow orange will glow enough against the pink and the future colors that I decide to choose to make it seem like a highlight even though I'm not using white to make the, the highlight sparkle you know what I mean and then here I am going in with I was going to use periwinkle and change my mind and grabbed out um, um, sky blue is the color I'm using yes nope I fibbed I put the sky blue back and I grabbed out the periwinkle Periwinkle blue. It's kind of a light purpley blue. And I was thinking I could use it for the shadow areas. I didn't want to get too dark with my shadows too fast because the bird is... The, the colors are so vibrant. And... and I mean, pink is a hard color to um, bring back once you get darks on top of it. But I went in and tried little circly scribbly marks once again, um, in all the shadow areas, um, especially where that head is cocked forward a little bit. Really wanted to get that, the, the look that the face is a little more forward in front of that neck area. <coughs> Bunches of little teensy itsy bitsy circles and then I used the brush to, oh, I forgot to, um, soften that pink uh, in the on the neck. So that's what I'm doing right here real quick before I get too carried away with that periwinkle blue. And the color palette I picked for this is actually really subdued and um, kind of pastel. It's really pretty. I'm holding it in my hand as I as I talk about what I'm doing. I'm using my Princeton Neptune round number eight. It is my favorite, favorite watercolor brush. And I just softened the pink texture away on the on the beak because I'm going to go in on that later and add more colors and details. Getting in that little bit of shadow where the feathers come up off the beak. And the top of the head and the back of the neck are pretty shadowed. But once again, I didn't want to go too dark too fast. Oh, here's where I decide I don't like the background. It's very distracting. And I get out my pan pastels and I'm using the Payne's Gray. And I get out one of my um, blending tools. It's I call it a wand. It's my magic blending wand. <laughs> and I put a, a light coat over the entire background to kind of mute it and um, push it back a little bit. I felt like it was competing too much with the bird. <coughs> Pardon my cough. Still, still have a tickly cough. It's just crazy. Um, but yeah, I like that so much better. It really... Um, softens and pushes that background back and really makes him pop off the page. And I put down tissue so I don't drag the pan pastel all over my pink, pink bird. 
And now I am using... Do, do, do. Yeah, Prussian. I thought I grabbed Prussian. I meant to grab the indigo because the Prussian blends out into a brighter blue and the indigo, um, when you blend it out with other colors, will, will it stays dark. Um, I thought when I was working that I snagged the Prussian or the indigo, but this is the Prussian blue and it's the one I chose. So I went with it. I stayed with it. Once it, you start blending, um, you don't really want to I mean, you can. It doesn't really matter. It's your artwork. You can do whatever you want. But I felt like I should just stick with it and see what happens. So I'm going in with the, the Prussian and doing little tiny circles where all the dark shadows are. And the top of the head is in a little bit of shadow. And just a little bit around where the feathers meet that beak. Oh yeah, and there were a couple of dark shadows on the beak that I really wanted to get in. And then once again, just tiny, tiny little circles, really light touch, because I, I like the effect of um, layering the, uh, I feel like they're pastels more than, um, they're more, they for me work more like oil pastels do, only you can wet them and blend them if you need to, which is amazing. Um, but that's how I tend to think of them as I'm using them, as more of an oil pastel that you can uh, move around with water. And that's what I'm using, how I'm using them here. I'm How I would use them if they were an oil pastel is light layers, really thin, so that you can see all the other colors kind of glowing through the previous, um, the, the layer you're currently putting down. I kind of get really carried away with finishing off the, the feather area on just the head part. <coughs> Sorry. And here and there, I use a little bit of a heavier hand because I know I'm going to go in and use a lot more color at this point. Um, some of the spots are pretty densely covered. But these, you can layer so many layers. And this paper isn't textured hardly at all either. It's kind of um, got an almost smooth surface. And it takes quite a lot of layers, which is really nice. Oh, I couldn't decide if I wanted to use a brighter orange, white or a really pale gray for the highlight areas. So I grabbed all three and I started with the really pale gray. It is number, oh, my daughter messaging me, give me updates about my grandbaby. Um, this is silver gray. Uh, instead of using white, it's it's close to white, but it has a slight, slight gray cast to it. I, I felt like it wasn't, it didn't, um, it blended enough and yet popped at the same time. And I just go through and, and basically blocking in all the highlight areas that I want to really pop off the page so that I don't forget because you get layering colors and you're like, oh no, I put color where I wanted it to be light. <laughs> really getting some of the highlights in on that beat because I'm going to go in and add more just a little bit more shadow and, and whatnot later on and trying to remember that there's lots of textures in the beak like any bird's beak there there are more textures and nuance of um, grain basically th than you think if you look real close at a picture of any kind of bird their beaks are very interesting. They, each bird has some. Some birds have really smooth beaks, but usually there's a little bit of texture and color change, which I think is really interesting. And a little bit of pink because I got it super light, and then some of the the silver gray over the top of that to soften the edges and kind of blend them together a little bit. These do blend together really nicely, just layering one over the other. I would imagine you could use your finger to press them into the page or like a smudging tool, like one of those silicone smudging tools. I haven't tried those yet. Oh, I should get those out. 
Look at me having ideas. <laughs> um, but yeah, <clears throat> I didn't even think about doing that while I was doing this piece. That could have been interesting. The next one, there'll be more. There'll be so many more. I love these things. Um, yeah, just going with that, that, like I said, I get super carried away with almost finishing up that beak and the, the head area before I even move on to the rest of the, the bird. There's this little bit of glow that I wanted to get on that, like, cheek area behind the beak. So I went in with the gray and then went in with the pink over the top of that. Just to give it that, that little bit of glisten look. I used quite a lot of this pink too. I, I burned it down a bit. Which is pretty awesome. You can buy these open stock as well. So if you do burn one down or you there are particular <coughs> colors that you really, really like, you can um, replace just the one color. That, that you enjoy. If you get the big set like I did, you do, do not need the big set either. The, you, um, the, I think the 36 is 30 or 40. I think you can buy a 30 or 40 set as well. Um, those would be more than enough. You don't need the big set. There's a lot, a lot more color selection, but it's looking at it now that I have it. Um, Especially if you're working over the top of other medium, you don't really need all these colors. <clears throat> it's a little overwhelming, quite frankly, to have them all sitting here. And, and at the beginning of the video, I was tapping that pink, like, do I really want to do this one? There's those other pinks over there. They look nice. <laughs> ah, decisions, decisions. And then going back in with the periwinkle. Periwinkle blue. Getting in a little purple glow. There's that shadow. I, I'm going in, trying to remember to go in with the periwinkle first for the shadows. And then over the top of the periwinkle with the Prussian, but only where it's really dark, like the darker darks. And getting a little bit of that darker. <coughs> and I'm going, I'm kind of running into the pan pastel a little bit and not minding that it's dragging a little bit into the the back of the bird right there because it's all going to be in shadow anyways but I'm going in and making little um, wiggly zigzaggy um, almost triangle shapes to get the effect of the feathers wrapping like going in the direction of that S sh or C shape of the neck really I, I didn't really press very hard a very light hand and just kind of scribbly marks to get that the feel of fe feathers and then going over those with the pink to kind of soften them a little <coughs> bit but not all out just the edges I'm really worried about that back of that neck for some reason I, it's not dark enough for me yet I'll get there I really wanted him to look like he was in f like his feathers were in front of the um I keep coughing. I didn't silence the uh video clips either cuz the I didn't mind the sounds in the background of me working. I keep picking things up and putting things down. That's what that noise is. And more periwinkle to get more shadows in. That periwinkle over the pink is um, really, really nice. It gets that shadowy feather effect without being too dark too fast. Uh, <coughs> at this point I was thinking, man, I don't know, maybe I should have chosen a darker color for the shadows. Like, maybe I should have really got in there with something more black-gray, more intense. I mean, I'm definitely glad I didn't, but that's what I was thinking when I was scribbling in all this 
periwinkle over that pink to get the shadows <coughs> in. Oh yeah, I decided to move the palette out of the way because I'm done with watercolors. Like for real. And zoom in a little bit. And then here's all the colors we're using. Just the colors in my hand are all we use. I don't believe I grab any. Oh, at the very end. We, we incorporate one more color. And I, I almost forgot to carry the periwinkle down into the body. So that's what I'm doing here. I remembered, oh, I gotta get the shadows in down here too. No? I'm just so happy with the texture of the feather effect. A little bit of that. Just that touch of the um, I said it again. I dropped it. That touch of the um, orangish yellow, that's the actual name of this, by the way, is it really makes a difference in, in how happy I am with the piece. It adds a little nuance, a little, a little interest. And I like to do that. Pick a color, pick a color you wouldn't normally use, and put it in an area in place of like another light that. Normally, I would generally, logically pick white to go over all the highlight areas. And in not wanting to use white, what can I use in place of the white to give me that same effect and not um, make me wish I hadn't made that choice, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and that orangish, <coughs> that orangish, I've been coughing a little bit again. That orangish yellow is really, really nice. It has a little glow, a little interest. I'm really, really happy with how it looks. And then I'm trying to get those um, softer, floofy feathers in on that body right here. Start with the pink and go back and forth and back and forth. And this is almost two hours of, of me going back and forth with, and I find this to be incredibly relaxing just a handful of colors and not talking just head down creating and not really tr not really purposefully thinking about each choice <coughs> um another reason i wanted to do the voiceover i know i coughed a lot during this video Because I, I watched it through to edit it, and yeah, I was I was a little annoyed with it. Like, man, I coughed a lot. But the, look at that! Doesn't that look so cool? It already looks feathery. So happy. And then periwinkle for the shadowy areas. Um, didn't want to get too dark, but I definitely wanted in shadow on the back of this body back here. I'm just scribbling, just scribbling and uh, willy nilly. Look at me go. Like a little crazy person. And then we grab my cat. This cat's tongue brush, by the way, is amazing. If you don't have one of these, um, they're, they're fun to use. I'm getting crayon all over me. They're, I'm in my hand and I, my hands are warm. <laughs> so, you know, I have crayon all over my palm. Um, it is the three-quarter inch cat tongue faux <coughs> squirrel brush by Zen Art. And it is a, I think I may have got this in a um, art box. Um, but it is a really nice brush for getting um, feather effects, as you see here. And then I also used it in the Watercolor Wednesday piece that you'll see tomorrow um, to get, to do all my pine trees. It, it made really nice work of, of my, my pine trees. Not the little ones, not all the little ones, but the, the big ones. Yeah, this is a, a versatile little brush. I'm, I'm digging it. It has a little point on it, so you can really get in there in those little tight corners and get those swoopy marks. And when you need a fine point, it, it has that little, little bitty fine point on it. Went in and kind of just softened everything with a little swoosh of, of water. I decided 
Definitely gonna do it. I'm gonna get in on the beak with the black. This is the, well, noir, but it's black. And re really darken it up. I, I like the textures of the watercolor, but I wanted it to be more, um, I, I guess make more of a statement, that beak. And I just quickly go through and put in a very thick, heavy layer of black. I press down pretty hard um, to get a nice coat over that. I'm mindful of where I want the highlights to be though, leaving a little bit of sparkle. Um, yeah, I just can't say enough good things about these Neo Color 2. Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Color Crayon. They are super fun. Super, super fun. Get in that groove right there that where the upper and lower beaks meet. And then a little bit of highlight around the eye. I had a problem with... <coughs> these don't come to a very fine point unless you sharpen them, of course. And I didn't, honestly didn't think to sharpen it. So I grab out a, what did I grab out? I have grabbed out my Uni Pen Fine Liner. It is water and fade proof pigment ink and it is the size 0.4 in black. And I go through and get all the, the little fiddly details around the eye. Um, and it went over the Neo Color 2 really well. Like, I had no problem. It didn't dig in or um, gouge out any of the color and make those grooves that usually when you use a pen over or any kind of pastel, it'll kind of dig in a little bit. I was, I did use a, a tender light hand too. Um, but yeah, I was really pleased with how it went over the, the past, the Neo Color 2s really easily. Mixed media. It is a fun way to go. I highly recommend trying it out. Just little details here and there to really make him, um, like, sing and, and make that his face pop and, and be the focal point. You want that beak and the eye basically to be the focal point. Everything else is window dressing. To me. And I decided to put in a little bit of texture on the beak that, um, it wasn't there in any of the reference photos. There's no, like, delineated black lines on, on the beak. But I really wanted to add a little flair. So I did. Kind of <coughs> filled in around those two f little feathers down there to make them look like they're really on top. And my finishing touches, I grabbed that, bl the same blending wand that I used before and decided to use the, the gray that's left over on the wand and kind of just touch up all the shadow areas and kind of lend a little cohesiveness to the piece and gently drag it over where, where all the dark darks need to be, where I want to soften any pink out. And, and really throw it into a more shadowed Ooh, not too much there I was yeah there we go nice light hand and just kind of pulling a little bit from the background onto the edges and a little bit around the eye I just thought it lended a little bit of romance to his, his little look because he was looking a little crazed there for a second <laughs> which I thought was hilarious the crazed flamingo yeah that's what I should name this this video I won't but that is funny and just a few more touches here and there Mixed media, you guys. 
I highly recommend trying it out. You never know what you're going to create. <coughs> thinking, thinking, do I want to fuss with it anymore? And I do, but I don't. And I really didn't like the, um, that little glow around him. So I'm trying to soften and, and darken. I grabbed the, the pastel and I really want that. The immediate dark area around his head <coughs> to be solid, more solid than it is. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just touching that up a little bit. And yeah, I think that's the end of the voiceover part of this. There we go. Yay! All right, guys, there is our finished flamingo. I'm actually really digging how it turned out. I like all the textures. Uh, um, I wasn't digging that background, that granulating background. I think that was just too busy for all the textures that I was putting on him. Um, it drew the attention away, so the pan pastel really softened that out. But there's still texture. You can still see the texture, like, let me move that light a little bit. Pulling through the page. Yeah, I really, and him, I really like all the textures on him. These Karen Dosh crayons are just flippin' amazing. I love them so much. Look at that. And you can put pen on top. It's just a very versatile tool. And then the pan pastel on top of the Neo Color 2s. Just, I'm just really, really loving how these work. Yeah, you guys can let me know in the comments below what you think of this one. I'm really digging it. This is my um, Mixed Media Monday up a day late. Woo woo! <laughs> if you stayed through the whole video and you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!